Your Creative Push, episode 21. You can sit around all you want and say you're making art, but until you actually get up and go do it, you're not. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Lisa Call. Lisa is a self-taught artist who creates bold, geometric, contemporary textile paintings composed of richly colored, hand-dyed fabric. Her work is abstract, but draws elements from many places. Her love of the geological forms of the Southwest, repetition, patterns, and an attraction to human-made structures for containment, such as fences and stone walls. Lisa, take a minute and tell me if there's anything I missed in that intro, and maybe give us a peek into your personal life. Well, I think that intro is a, a pretty good intro. I guess what would be missing is that I also uh, am a, um, a life coach. So I am a coactive life coach, and I, um, I am just... I should be certified here within a week or two. I've gone through all the training and certification. I'm past all that, just waiting for the letter. So that kind of coupled with the creative work, the artwork that I do is a big part of who I am. And um, the other thing is that I used to be a software engineer and I managed a software team. And about 18 months ago, I quit that job. And um, my kids also graduated from high school and moved out and I went on an adventure and I ended up um, coming to New Zealand and meeting a man and moving myself to New Zealand in the last nine months. So now I live in New Zealand. So I'm talking to you from Monday morning in New Zealand instead of Sunday night. Oh my gosh, a lot has happened yeah. for you recently. Yeah. That's that's great. Now, did, did you get into the life coaching all at the same time? Is that where that came from? Um, the life coaching came about because I I taught online art classes and it became very clear to me that in talking with my students, we would have one-on-one -on -one phone calls to kind of help guide them with the artwork they were doing, that what they really needed more than anything else was coaching, that they didn't really need someone to teach them how to make art. They really needed someone to help them get to the studio and do their creative work. And so as I was getting more into the teaching because that's what I replaced the software engineering with was teaching my art jobs. I realized that the coaching was really what was most helpful to artists. And so I chose that path and decided to go into the coaching just because I love helping people do their art. I don't really teach people how to make art. I, I teach people how to be an artist. You are the perfect guest for this show because <laughs> we, we need you. All right. Excellent. I, I'm, I'm here. Glad to help. Now, how, how did you, what is the process of, of you said you're uh, getting your certification? What, what's that process like? So the, I chose coactive coaching because I really like the idea that both being and doing are important. Well, I think the secret is great. You can sit around all you want and say you're making art, but until you actually get up and go do it, you're not. But the mindsets necessary to pull all that together to be creative are incredibly important. So coactive coaching is about being and doing. So the CTI are the people that do the, the training for this coactive coaching. And the process was six months of classes. It's like one class every weekend for six months. And then I went through a six month intensive certification program where we had phone calls every week and lots of reading and listening to lessons online. And then there was a test. I just have the last bit is an oral exam and you know, lots of, lots of, um, supervision and making sure we knew what we were talking about and, and how to be a coach. What would you say is your like number one advice uh, that you give with your life coaching to say to somebody who's listening right now who you know is kind of thinking about doing their art but you know like you said not truly doing their art just thinking about it. That's that's actually an interesting question because coaching isn't isn't consulting it and that's that's, you know, when you when you hire a coach, if you don't find a trained coach, you end up basically with a consultant that tells you what to do. So with coaching, what I do is I help people identify what matters to them and then connecting with that. And and by connecting to your values, you find a pathway into that activity. And so my number one advice is to try and connect with what's truly authentically you versus what you should be doing or what other people are doing. That's good advice. Yeah. 
Um, now, what are some things in, in your creative life that hold you back, or, like initially and maybe still do? You know, it's probably the same thing that holds everybody back is the, the fear of not being enough of my artwork not being enough there's always a you know a little bit of eek this isn't really as good as i think it is and so there's some fear there that that can definitely definitely hold me back the biggest resistance that um i've ever faced was uh getting a divorce so there's nothing like a major disruption in your life to uh put an end to creativity. And it wasn't the divorce that was the problem. It was the fact that I had to go back to work. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I went from being a stay-at-home mom where I got to be in the house to having to work 40 hours a week. And that was 40 hours a week. Wow. That was huge resistance. That resistance was um, a total exhaustion. Yeah. I've, I've, especially starting this podcast and trying to keep up with my other, with my writing and stuff and having a full-time job is, <laughs> is truly as you said, exhausting. Yeah, it, it's just a huge amount of work. And, you know, I, so I, it, you know, in addition to the demons, it's just the, the number of hours in the day at some point, you know, for me to be able to quit my full-time job, what I had to do is essentially work three full-time jobs at the same time. So I was managing a software team full-time. It was an international team, so I would work at all hours a day. We had to, you know, I had people in Singapore and India and in the UK and, you know, in, in, in Australia when I was in the States. So I was always on the phone at all hours of the day. So I was working a lot. And then I was also teaching my online art classes and trying to match my software salary with a, with a workshop. Um, so I was teaching a lot. And then I was also showing and exhibiting as an artist because I, I always, you know, I'm always making art and always exhibiting. So I am a, a professional artist on top of doing all these other things. And so as essentially three full-time jobs, uh, I pretty much didn't have a life other than working. And it was, you know, I, there were times that I would smash into resistance and um, I would, you know, Netflix is, is the, is the, creative person's best friend when they hit that wall you know i'd uh, you know binge watch every episode of friends over a one month period oh, that's <laughs> <a killer. laughs> and, uh, you know as soon as friends hit netflix that was the end of me doing any work for an entire month as i watched every uh, episode so yeah it um that and i you know i also think that that's just a normal cycle sometimes that i don't ever look for balance that was actually what question you were going to ask me right about balance is i don't believe in balance oh, yeah. i believe it the balance is something you look at over the long term and short short term. I am intensely focused on something. I might be um, preparing work for a, a solo show. I, I spent two months making all the work for a solo show this year and getting it ready and hanging the show and having the exhibit. And that was a huge push. I was working 18 hour days just making art. And sometimes I'm like intensely focused on my workshops and sometimes I'm really intensely focused on doing nothing, <laughs> which is what I'm in the period right now here in New Zealand as it's coming into summer. There's a whole lot of nothing going on. That's good, though. And it's certainly necessary, like you said, to recharge your batteries. Yeah, you need that. And uh, I, I like that I idea of not having a balance, like of just going full full on with, you know, whatever is at the top of your mind. Yeah. I, I just don't believe in week to week balance or day to day balance. I just think it's a myth. I think it's, I mean, if we have a passion for something, it's very hard to have balance and, and, you know, and so things get neglected and that's life. And instead of feeling guilty for it, I, you know, make sure that I come back around, you know, sometimes my, you know, my family will be what I'm focused on intensely. And sometimes my family is fending for themselves and they can figure out what to eat on their own. <laughs> yeah, there, there's another episode of Friends coming on. Go, yeah, go make exactly. your own food. Exactly. Netflix is the worst the, the way they do that, though, because they only give you like 20 seconds to decide if you want to watch the next episode. Uh, yeah, exactly. And there it is. Want, so, want to, ah, want well, okay. I don't. Ah, well, <laughs> you don't need sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wanted to ask you how long does it take you to create one of your textile paintings? Yeah, it depends on the size of the piece. My last show, I had a, a wall that had 24 12-inch pieces, and each of those took about six hours to do. They, they're they pretty slow um, in terms of, you know, there's a lot of stitching. It's all hand, lots and lots of stitching on my sewing machine. It's hand-dyed fabric, so I had to dye the fabric, and then I stitch it all to canvas. My bigger pieces, it, 
you know, I guess it averages somewhere between three to six hours per square foot is about how long it takes to make the work. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a commitment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a commitment. So if I'm doing a, a, a major piece that, you know, maybe six feet square, cause I love working big, we're talking a month of my time to make, wow. make the piece. So you really get to know that particular piece. I do. And um, I listen to a lot of books on tape. So I, I associate that a lot of times when I look at the piece, I'll think of the books on tape I was listening to at the time. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. There's something about our, our memory when we hear things that, it, it, we really can draw back to where we were at the time. It, it's interesting. A few guests have, have mentioned that before. And, uh, I liken it to like a smell. Cause I, I agree. Like sometimes when I go back and read something that I wrote years ago, I remember exactly where I was and what my like life situation was. Even if I was writing about a time from, you know, five years before that, I remember exactly where I was and I liken it to like a smell, you know, like, all of a sudden you you smell this familiar smell and all all of a sudden all these memories come flooding back to you yeah yeah and um i was reading somewhere that that's the reason why you know you're supposed to study in the same place every single time but actually our memory is better if you change where you study so if you're studying for an exam Mm -hmm. study in different places because what else is going on around you actually is part of that memory and having it come from different places somehow cements that information better so maybe that's why I was, I'm really good at taking tests because I wasn't really good at going to the library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting what, how setting plays a part. And uh, I like how that uh, plays a part in your art as well. Yeah, absolutely. Now that we're talking about memories, can you take us back to one of your first creative moments and take us back to that place? Yeah, you know, the, the thing that I always remember as kind of a oh, – my. Well, there, there's two and they're pretty closely related to back my creative moments were in elementary school. My best friend, who is also incredibly creative, we, you know, we pretty much spent all of our, our time together and we were always doing something creative. And there were two things that we did as I remember taking all the trash out of our trash cans of her house and mine. And we built, I don't know, these kind of towerist castle kind of constructions in her backyard. I can kind of remember being in her backyard, just taping and um, stapling all this trash together. It, uh, it was kind of a mess. And then we also we also were pretty creative um, with the liquids in my house. We didn't do this at her house. Somehow it was my house. We would take all of the food and detergents and everything and mix them together and make potions with them and store them in the freezer for some reason. I'm not sure. But, um, like, so we were always very creative. You know, we, I didn't go out at recess to, to go play. We, we had stolen my mother's colored pencils and we used to draw during recess. So fourth and fifth grade, I was in drawing instead of out running around. So you had the itch from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I pretty much always have been creative, always need to be making something. Well, and I, I hope you labeled those potions with a Mr. Yuck sticker or something. Um, no, I, my mom, my mom still will tell me stories about finding things in the freezer. Oh, uh, that's great. So I, I, any, just to warn any viewers at home, if you use Drano and a plastic container for your potion, it doesn't work well. <laughs> so, the Drano will eat through the bottom of that plastic container pretty quick. <laughs> All right. If you take nothing else from this, that's remember right, that. Do not use drain up and in your parents bathroom it is not a good plan <laughs> oh no yeah. did you get grounded no my parents are pretty cool about it it's a that's cool yeah <laughs> but you make your potions can you take us back to your best or most triumphant uh creative moment yeah it uh it was uh this really fantastic time i used to work in my studio pretty consistently between christmas and new years because if my kids were at my exes during that time i would take that time because i wasn't at work i could take that week off work and i would i would work 15 hours a day on my art which 10 years ago when my kids were smaller and um i was home that was a it was such a gift to get to do that to really focus on my creativity and i was making this piece at that time and I just remember, I can't remember what year it was, but I just remember this big red piece. It must have been around 2004, possibly. And I just, everything really clicked for me. And that piece was kind of the piece that I, I look, I looked at that piece and I'm like, you know what? I really am an artist that it was like, really, I would go down there and 
it just the feeling was just so perfect. And sometimes the when you're making art, it just it, it just flows. You don't know what it is, and that piece was such a gift to um, to just have it happen at that time. And I just remember very strongly that feeling that wow, this is amazing. What a great feeling that is. Yeah, it was pretty fantastic. Where is that piece now? Do you still have it? Oh, no, I don't have that piece. And actually, it's pretty cool because that, that piece was purchased by a, a hospital in, I believe, Ohio. And it is it is the kind of centerpiece for a cancer um, unit at the hospital. And it was purchased right around the same time, a couple of years after my, my dad passed away from cancer. So I always thought that was pretty cool to have that um, that piece in that hospital. That is very special. Yeah. What, what would you say that your art and creativity brings to your life? You know, it brings two things. One, it just brings great passion. It, um, it's an outlet for that great passion. But the other thing is it just brings great amounts of sanity. I know if I'm starting to get really edgy or um, kind of a little crazy, if I go and start making, I definitely calm down almost right away. It, it just is an outlet for all of that energy. Yeah, it's definitely a, a good form of therapy, I found. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It is. Lisa, who's your greatest inspiration? Yeah, I think uh, one of my favorite artists is um, Richard Diebenkorn. I just find his work incredible to, to see it in person. I've traveled all over the country to see his shows. I went to D.C. to see the Ocean Park series, and then I went to um, Palm Springs to see the Berkeley series when they pull all these pieces together. There's just, I, I don't know, there's something about the energy of his work just uh, it just floors me. I spent hours looking at his work. Share with us your favorite book, YouTube clip, or whatever else that you draw inspiration from, and that maybe we could too. Yeah, that was the hardest question that I had. <laughs> with. It, um, you know, I, I'd probably have to say, you know, the Stand by Art and Fear is a great book, but I've never read the book cover to cover because I find books like that when I read them. They tend to stop me dead in my tracks. Like I'd never faced writer or artist block before, like where I couldn't work in my studio. But I read the book, um, The Fear of Art or The, Ar the War of Art by sure. Steve Pressfield, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I read that book and somehow it was like really messed with my brain and made me think, oh, you should be stuck. And so I didn't make art for a while. So so those books that are kind of supposed to help unstick you. If you're not stuck, I don't, there's no reason to read them. I think maybe I was just a little too impressionable. So I think those books are all great, but I think they don't work if you don't necessarily need them. But if you're really stuck, I think they're really great books. So, so you know, my favorite books are just nonfiction or fiction books, just reading for fun. Yeah, just taking your brain out of that type of thinking. Yeah. And so the YouTube clip, but the favorite YouTube clip is an interview with Will Smith and he shares secrets of his success. And, you know, he's got some amazing um, stories in there about his dad having to build a wall and then they had to take it down and rebuild another wall. Ba basically teaching him perseverance. It's just a fantastic thing. All you do is you just, um, you don't have to go and set out to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall ever built. You, you just say, I'm going to lay one brick one at a time as perfectly as you can. And then eventually you end up with a wall. But that video is pretty fantastic. It's really pretty inspiring. It, you know, he really basically says, if you want something, go get it, period. You know, if you want to be creative, just go do it. Perfect. And we will have that uh, linked up in the show notes at yourcreativepush.com slash Lisa Call. Uh, it's interesting you say about the books, too, because one of, one of my things that, well, that happened to me and that I kind of not preach against, but is you, you can get stuck with, with all those those books. You know, you can go from one to the other, and it's kind of addicting because they give you this feeling that you're kind of accomplishing something because you're thinking about accomplishing it like the next day or once you're finished the book but uh right. you can get stuck in that in that kind of feeling of oh okay I'm, ge I'm getting stuff done but you're you're really not yep so i think it's important to just kind of put the books down and, and get started too absolutely it, and that's that whole thing going back to the coactive coaching it's being and doing are both important you yeah you have to have the right mindsets but you have to actually do it also which is why I don't really like teaching how to make art because I figure everyone knows how to make art. Just do it. Who cares if it is technically not perfect? You'll figure it out. Whenever my students, you know, have questions and 
because I teach how to work in a series. And whenever they say, well, I had technical problems here and there, I'm like, yeah, you'll figure that out. I know mm -hmm. you will. You know, you can go watch a quick video clip. But what really matters is doing it, doing it, doing it. And that's really how you figure it out. You just keep doing it. Yeah, I think it's a muscle that like everybody has. And it's it's clumsy at first when you start using it like anything else. But, you know, once you kind of get rolling, it's can become very strong, actually. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Lisa, now it's time for our final push. And this is where I ask you to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of, of somebody that you've already inspired today and give them that final push into action. My The final push that I thought of is that it goes back to that, um, you know, working that 40-hour-a-week job and, and, and doing the work. The way I got back to work uh, in my studio, the way I started making again after having to go back to work again, you know, after 10 years off is that I turned off the radio and I turned off the music and I turned off the books on tape on my drive home from work. And I spent the time driving home. I spent my commute time visualizing myself having a huge amount of energy and having the motivation and desire to work in my studio. So when I got home, I actually did. So I kind of like visualized myself back in my studio again. And after about the six to eight month break of being way too tired to go in there, I basically I did it by visualizing it and just saying I could do it. And eventually it just worked and I got back to work in my studio and I was able to come home from work and get back to work. I love that. I, I've never even heard that. And I, sh I should have. That's such a profound thought to me uh, of just kind of, you know, like we were saying before, turning off the, the music or, or closing the book or whatever and just doing the action, but utilizing that, that car ride home. Yeah. Turn this podcast off and just start thinking about yourself doing the work. And when you get home, you'll find that you do have the energy. I, I love that idea. Yeah. It's interesting because one of the things I did is uh, I moved closer to my job because I had this horrendous commute, you know, it was a 20 minute drive and no traffic and an hour drive during rush hour. So I, I moved uh -huh. closer and I was too close. I only had 10 minutes to get home mm -hmm. and it wasn't enough time to switch gears. And I, I actually, it took me a while to readjust. So if you have a long commute, it actually isn't a bad thing because that was that hour to completely decompress and um, be able to make the shift. So once I got closer, I had to spend a little bit more time at home to make that shift. But it um, so it was kind of interesting that my shorter commute actually got in the way of my creativity a little bit. Yeah, it's interesting. You need that that detox period. It's like uh, yeah. in a in outer space. You need to have that that room, that chamber where you can uh, kind of change all the elements and and change the oxygen levels and make everything okay to step into <laughs> step into the space yeah. station or wherever you're going yep exactly exactly that's such good advice lisa i, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show today oh you're most welcome we appreciate the push and you can find lisa on her website which is lisacall.com she's on facebook at lisa call fine art instagram lisa call fine art and on Twitter at Lisa. Oh, yeah. I love this and conversation. You can also from, find all, from everything coach. we talked about today yeah, and this is all what the we need. We need, coaches. Coaches page at we need coaches to help us through. Uh, I also love when she brought up the fact Lisa, that thank motivational you so much. books. We really just, appreciate it. Just completely oh, stop you on your tracks. Yeah, most um, they, ha fun. they have absolutely for me, um, even motivational podcasts, which I am ma making. Um, they're not good for you to listen to all the time. Just stop listening and, and do the work and come back to the podcast when you need it. I'd strongly encourage you to only listen to one episode a day or no episodes a day if you don't need it. When I set out to create this, I, I wanted to make it a 30 minute podcast, you know, 30 minute commute on your ride home or, or in the morning or whenever you need it that you can listen to and then stop listening to it. Like I didn't, if an interview went on for over 30 minutes, if it goes an hour, I, I'll split it into two. And that's not to like double dip on episodes, which is great because then I have to do, you know, less work um, as far as getting guests and stuff. But it's not for that reason. It's just because I don't want you to listen to a two hour podcast. It's not about you sitting there listening to hours and hours of, of me and my guests talking. It's about giving you this little, this little push, this, this, this thing to listen to that will get you to actually do your work. And so that's why I love what she says about, you know, driving home in silence. Try that. If this podcast isn't working for you to listen to on your way home or, or nothing is, nothing really is, try just having a motivational talk with yourself and kind of planning out 
what is going to happen exactly when you walk through that door. Are you going to pick up the remote and sit down on the couch? Are you going to open up a beer? Are you going to do whatever habits you've been doing your whole life? basically that that don't let you indulge in your creative hat like this new creative impulse or old creative impulse that's been in your brain like no try try just driving home in silence and even if it's just a 30 minute meditation with yourself that's great silence is great sometimes so yeah turn off this podcast if you don't need it and if you need it later turn it back on i i swear to god i will be completely ecstatic if driving home in silence and never listening to this podcast again works for you you know and and please email me and tell me if it does work for you that's that's the entire goal of this is to get you to to shut your brain up to stop listening to the to the other things that it wants you to do that's the whole goal of this podcast is is to make you just stop all your bad habits stop all the excuses and just do the work so literally whatever it takes to do if 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 all you had to hear was this one episode to get this this new habit, perfect. Awesome. My job is done. And that's great. Um, Maybe you can give me a nice rating and review and we'll call it a day, you know? So try it out. Just just try one, one time just driving home in complete silence, thinking about what you're going to do when you get home and it doesn't even have to be your creative habit it could be you know spending more time with your kids or, or exercising or whatever just try it out and let me know how it works i'm definitely interested to see so thank you lisa so much for coming on the show and thank you for listening to us and for hearing what we have to say and hopefully implementing it in, into your life tomorrow on the show we've got alex cherry you know and there's a certain power that you get with that with really like looking in the mirror and taking like an unflinching look at yourself and saying, this is who I am. And, and it's really hard in the beginning, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. Alex is a phenomenally talented artist who uses film, music, and pop culture to influence his art. And we had a really, really in-depth conversation about creativity uh, that you really don't want to miss. So that is tomorrow, and hopefully today we were able to give you enough of a push to get some work done. So have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.